Okay, so I have a brand new Adonis JS6 web starter kit opened up here, both in my browser as well as text editor. And the very first thing that we need to do to get TLN CSS4 up and running with this is to install its dependencies. So jumping into our terminal where our project is located, let's npm i to install Tailwind CSS. And there's a number of different approaches we could take to get Tailwind CSS actually integrated into our project. We could still use post CSS as we did with version three, or now in version four, there's also a Tailwind CSS Vite plugin specifically to get this up and running. Since Adonis.js 6 uses Vite within its projects for its front end assets, that's going to be the simplest approach to use. So let's target that with Tailwind CSS slash Vite. Hit enter to install both of those. And then once installed, we can go ahead and hide away our terminal. So that we can tell exactly when this takes place, let's first jump into our resources, views, home.edge page because this actually adds Tailwind CSS via the CDN inside of this page itself. So if we just remove this script, give this a save, we can see that we now no longer have Tailwind CSS applied on our web page here, noted by the now huge Adonis.js logo. We'll leave the custom colors and configuration here momentarily so that we can reference them in a little bit. Now that we have Tailwind CSS removed from the page, let's jump into Vite and let's get the Vite plugin imported and applied. So we'll import Tailwind CSS from at Tailwind CSS slash Vite. Then we just want to add that plugin into our plugins array and call it as a function. When we give this a save, we'll see nothing actually changes on our browser. And that's because we haven't actually applied Tailwind CSS to our CSS file yet. So we next want to jump into our CSS entry point for our Adonis.js assets, which is within our resources CSS app.css file. Jump up to the top of this and give ourselves a couple of line breaks. All that we need to do to get Tailwind CSS added to the CSS file is to import Tailwind CSS just like so. Once we give this a save, we're gonna see our page changes because Tailwind CSS is now back and included inside of this page. It doesn't look exactly the same because there are some class differences between Tailwind CSS version three and four, in addition to the fact that we haven't applied those custom colors back into this configuration yet. But if we go up to the logo for Adonis.js, right click it, inspect, we can indeed see that this has a width 16, height 16 applied to it, as well as a custom fill with the color primary. If we take a look at the applied rules, we see that we have a layer for width 16 and height 16 coming from Tailwind CSS applied on this SVG. So that is indeed coming through A-OK. -okay. And again, we haven't applied our custom colors back in yet, so we don't currently have a fill primary applied within these styles. And that might be your first question is how exactly do we reapply those custom configurations back in now that Tailwind CSS version four no longer comes with a Tailwind configuration file for us to plop it within? Well, that custom configuration actually is now recommended to take place directly within your CSS file where you're importing Tailwind CSS. You can still specify that you wanna use a Tailwind configuration by doing at config and then pointing to its relative path from the CSS file. So if we had it at the root of our project, that would be dot dot slash dot dot slash go out of our CSS directory, out of our resources directory and into the root, and then whatever that file name is called. So tailwind config.js if you're using the version three naming. So if you still wanted to use a configuration file, you have that approach available to you. But if we wanted to use the new CSS approach, there's now custom at rules that tailwind CSS has to add these in. So we can do at theme. Let's jump back over to our home.edge and let's copy these sand colors. We'll just copy those out of the style and now we can get rid of that style tag altogether. Jump back over into our app.css paste them in. And if we give it a save just as this, we're not going to notice any change over here on our page because Tailwind CSS now uses a certain naming convention to pick up which theme it is that we want to target. Currently, Tailwind CSS doesn't know that these are colors that we want to use. To find the naming conventions that they're looking for, within our browser, we can jump over to the Tailwind CSS documentation. Under core concepts within theme variables, there is this namespace section. And we can see that in order for us to define custom colors, we need to prefix the variable namespace with hyphen, hyphen, color, hyphen, and then whatever that variable name is that we want to apply. Same thing for font, custom text utilities, so on and so forth. So let's jump back over into our application and prefix all of these sand colors with the color namespace. I'm using command option and the down arrow to get multi cursors. We'll just type color hyphen to prefix those with that. If we give that a save, you might have noticed a very slight difference in our pages colors. If we go up a couple of parent elements, we have this BG gradient using our from sand one to sand two. If we take a look, this is now properly picking up our color sand two and our color sand one for this background gradient utility. So 
those are working a-okay. Let's go do the primary color next. So within this Tailwind configuration, there's this primary default and lighter color. Let's just give both of those there a copy, jump back into our app CSS, plop those into our theme, prefix both of these with hyphen hyphen color hyphen primary. And then the second one's gonna be hyphen lighter and then we can just get rid of the default from there. Add our semicolons onto both of those, give that a save. And now if we come back down to our SVG, which has that fill primary, we can now see that's applied within this element's rules. And if we hover over the color, we can see that it is indeed using our color primary. Let's do those fonts next. So back into here, we can copy this font string right there, jump back over into our app CSS. In order to add in a custom font, we wanna prefix this with hyphen hyphen font hyphen. And then let's target sans. Paste both of those back in, add a semicolon, give that a save. And we don't have any visible text quite on our page, but if we scroll down a little bit, we see some right there. And this is being applied on the body. So if we take a look at the body, we now have our font family with our font sans using our instrument sans variable. So that's now applied as well. Awesome. Now for me, the most confusing part to getting this up and running was what exactly do we need to do to get Purge CSS back up and working as we used to have that content array within our Tailwind configuration in version three. Well, now by default, Tailwind CSS is going to scan all of the files within our project's working tree. And that's going to be defined by the Tailwind CSS Vite plugin that we're using here. So where we have our Vite configuration is where our working tree is defined. So Tailwind CSS is automatically going to scan all of these files for class usages. Any candidates for classes that it finds, it will add it into Tailwind CSS to be included in our CSS file. There are a few file exclusions, like it's going to exclude everything within our .gitignore, which will also include our node modules. And then it will also pass over other CSS files as there's no need for redundancy there. And there's a couple other exclusions as well. But if for any reason we needed to change that default behavior or add an additional source to it, there's two different approaches that we can take. We can change where Tailwind CSS will use the working tree relative to our CSS file by passing a source argument into the Tailwind CSS import. So for example, this is relative to the CSS file. So if we do dot dot slash JS, this will change our project's working tree from the root of our project now to going back a directory out of our CSS and then into our JavaScript directory. And since we don't have any Tailwind CSS classes within there, we would expect for this to go back to having no Tailwind CSS classes. But whenever we give this a save, nothing actually changes. We can refresh our page and it's gonna look the exact same as it did before. That's because Tailwind CSS keeps all of these candidates in memory within that Vite plugin. So as it finds new candidates within our files, it will openly add that to the array to keep, but it's not going to remove them once they go away. So if we jump back into our terminal, jump over to where I have the server running. Let's give it a stop and a restart. Okay, you can see in the background already, but if we jump back into our browser now, we can see Tailwind CSS is no longer applied here. We don't have any of our classes coming through. If we change this now to views, which is where our page is that's actually using the classes, we can see it comes through, those candidates get added in while our server's running. Again, if we switch that back to JS, since these are in memory already, it's going to leave them there as is, but the second that we stop and restart our server, they're gonna go back away. So that's how you change the base path. And you can also turn off Tailwind CSS's automatic file finding by passing none into here as well. So let's turn that off for a brief bit. We can now use Tailwind CSS's source at role to add additional sources in here. And again, this is relative to our CSS files path. So again, if we do dot dot slash, views here, give this a save, those classes come back in and get applied to our page. If we switch this to slash JS, again, it's the exact same thing. Since these class candidates are already in memory, it's going to leave them there. But the second that we restart our server, they're going to go away. But if we come in and add yet an additional source dot dot slash to views, they're going to come right back now because we're now including that home page back in the purge CSS file list. So that was the most confusing part to this change for me. And I've seen some others confused by that as well. Um, so be sure to restart your dev server whenever you're trying to figure out your sources and what exactly you need to target. By default, you shouldn't have to worry about that at all. Tailwind CSS should automatically find and use whatever it is you need especially whenever you're using the Vite configuration. So you should be able to get away with just having this as your setup. And then again, we can go ahead and clean up the rest of our head here a little bit as well, getting rid of that configuration from there. And now we're all set and ready to go.